Welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays with Lisa, where transformation begins as we evoke, embrace, and evolve. Greetings, 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 and welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays with Lisa. It's so good to be here with you, isn't it? Today is uh, April 26. Uh, and today's session is going to be a little bit sensitive topic. The topic is going to be about denim day. All you see is me wearing a denim, but there is a reason for this. And for those of you who do not know me, welcome to Heal Talk. My name is Lisa Bubari, and by trade, I'm a clinical hypnotherapist, stress management consultant, and a domestic abuse consultant. So, denim day what is exactly denim day and when is denim day and why am i talking about denim day in 1992 in rome italy there was an 18 year old girl who was raped by a 45 year old driving instructor in the car and on her first driving lesson and he took her to an isolated road pulled her out of the car removed her genes, and forcefully raped her. She reported the rape, and through all the anguish and everything that she went in through it, the instructor was arrested. Now, what happened was, through years later, of course, and I'm speaking to it as a matter of fact, and we'll get to the emotions, in 1999, the driving instructor appealed this and claiming that the sexual assault was consensual and the case made it all the way to what is called the Supreme Court uh, in Italy and the conviction was overturned and the conviction was overturned by a court judge. And I'm going to read for you verbatim that why he was overturned and released. Because this enraged women to a point that they started, they made it to a like a awareness of what happens when there is such a sexual assault happening. And as a decision for that, it spread out throughout globally now in 1999 uh, in Los Angeles this day the statement of the court argued that because the victim was wearing jeans and the jeans were so tight that she it could not have been raped that she must have helped him pull the jeans down that by helping him, that's called consent. Now, I'm going to read it verbatim. A statement from the court argued that because the victim wore very tight jeans, she had to help him remove them. And by removing the jeans, it was no longer rape, but consent, consensual sex. And this became known throughout Italy as the jeans alibi. So enraged by the verdict, the women in Ital Italian parliament protested by wearing jeans on the steps of the Supreme Court. And this protest was picked up by national media. It became global and eventually spread to Los Angeles. Inspired by Patty Ochiozo Gianni's executive director of Peace Over Violence throughout everyone and this day, which is April 27th, the last Wednesday of April, has become the day every year since 1999. Peace over violence has recognized this day as Denim Day. So what happens is women wear jeans. Doesn't have to be tight. But it's an honor of recognizing who we are and what is assault, what is consent, and when we say no, it means no. So allow me, allow me to take this moment and talk about something. Um, 
it's like understanding what is assault because there are two categories of assault one is a simple assault and one is aggravated okay and few of the most common types of assault are experienced verbal assault simple assault aggravated assault and sexual assault so the term sexual assault really refers to sexual contact or the behavior that occurs without explicit consent of the victim so some of the forms of sexual assault can be attempt of rape fondling or unwanted sexual touching forcing a victim to perform sexual acts such as oral sex or penetrating the uh, perpetrator's body now the types of assault and i'm going to name them one is rape date rape or i can say 90 percent of rape acquaintance rape marital rape still happens in some countries sodomy and incest incest assault okay now if we go further in the types of sexual violence are these forced abortion it's a sexual violence forced marriage even though there are some countries around the world that still believe that you have to marry so that's a, a sexual violence uh, it's a type of a violence that is against their wants and needs but it is mandatory uh, sexual exploitation is also one uh, and then we go into sexual harassment sexual abuse and then rape so you see this entire category when it comes to uh, sexual assault it can be by unwanted touching all the way to of course gang rape and everything else so why are we talking about this why are we talking about this because what happened and why we're wearing this is the impact that it makes so if we talk about the marriages that are forced marriages for a couple that they have to marry because of a tribal or a family because of this is tradition without getting into their um, their ethics formation this is part of that's how they do it we bring that out and there is young girls being married to someone twice their age three times their age so in a way the this female becomes a product I am giving you this in return of that just the hands giving that is like literally selling right so we we're not talking about that and we're I'm not here to discuss that but when does it become the fine line I was talking about this and someone uh, a friend of mine turned around and said well for some people when a woman wears something provocative and she does the act the body movement that it's voluptuous uh, they are voluptuous and becomes very sexual and it's a tease when it's a tease then if that person has a sexual addiction and they can't help themselves and they have to well here's my question that I understand that fact if you are being teased and you can't have but there is a switch when there is that fine line of when the switch goes on or off if you hear the words no no means no 
not now, not here, not at this moment, not this way, not that way. No is no. No does not mean maybe. And that's the exact wording. No. Because no is as good of an answer as a yes. And no means no. When someone is addicted to sugar, when someone is addicted to drugs, they say they can't help it. If the drug is there, they must have it. True. If the sugar is there, you must have it. If the cigarette is there, you must have it. If this is there, you must have it. And you believe you cannot control yourself and you must have that. But that thing, that sugar, that drug, the gamble, whatever it is, the thing cannot speak and say no. But a human can. And the person who says no is valid. Anything beyond that becomes an assault. So if it is against someone's unwanted, unwanted, unasked for, uninvited, even if it was a tease, does not mean you can have it. So for some court, a magistrate, a judge, a man to say that you can't have, that it was a consensual sex because the, tight, the genes were so tight you must have helped. And because you helped, that means you gave consent. Allow me to say this as a clinical hypnotherapist working for with women, empowering women, helping them feel better, more in peace. Do you know how many clients I have helped that, that have come here with panic disorder, anxieties, palpitation, feeling overwhelmed, over anxious, overweight. And one thing that they didn't realize that how much they put on themselves only to protect themselves. Some to be so fat that they become undesirable. Being undesirable to the other sex, to the other person, to the other gender to become so overwhelmed that they don't even take care of themselves that they don't even look at themselves they don't give themselves the time of a day to have a me time so that they can journey within that they are so anxious and stressed and walking on eggshells without realizing what's happened and when we start peeling away to evoke what was that's the whole thing why are you holding on to that weight? Why are you holding on to this anxiety? Why do you constantly feel walking on eggshells? And if life is so good right now, as we start peeling away, believe it or not, they were sexually assaulted. I'm not saying everyone, but the ones who come, the ones who are constantly walking on eggshells, and having deep emotional wounds that have not been treated, trauma that has not been treated. And it can be verbal, it can be physical, it can be mental, it can be emotional. Those are all abuses and we're not talking about assault as a physical assault, as a domestic violence, but it's abuse. And so much of abuse when it happens as a child and we take it on, we take it on verbal. When you see it in the house, you're constantly feel overwhelmed and you're integrated with that. And that's all you get to see. That's all you get to know. And yes, a lot of assault happens with the people we know. 
believe it or not, uncles, neighbors, grandfathers, yes, incest, so much that happens. To deal with that when you love the person who is doing or you care for the person who's doing and you are told, be quiet, shut up, don't say that. This is our secret. And it starts with looks. It can start with a touch. It can start by saying how to dress for me because this is how I like it. It starts with so much of a woman thinking that she is becoming pretty with that person, not realizing how they are being manipulated. All that affects every nerve and every muscle, every organ, every tissue, every essence, and it goes to the core of the person. The effects may not show, but it does show. It comes in their behavior. It comes how a woman or a girl comes to isolate herself. It comes how sometimes just the opposite, they become more promiscuous, thinking that this is how I get love. This, if I'm touched, then I am loved. If I am done this, then they want me, that I am accepted, then this is. So, you know, it's like, having a drug and not realizing this is called poison versus penicillin. Am I putting penicillin in my body because of my wounds or am I putting poison thinking that it is penicillin? And it all comes down to perhaps mislabeling, mislabeling, misrepresentations, misunderstandings. But again, no is a no. But a little girl or even a little boy, yes, even a little boy, a little child, or a young person. And yes, it does happen with adults. Today, we are honoring those who have been assaulted. I am honoring those because today, is just being on Facebook live with me but tomorrow is global it's just one day and yet it is happening every single day it is happening every single moment throughout the world even human trafficking is happening globally the number one money maker in the world and there is so much of, yes, we are bringing awareness to that. We are bringing awareness to rape. We are bringing awareness to mental wellness. And you know the number one mental wellness is why don't we start at home recognizing, honoring, appreciating who we are, home within yourself, home your body, realizing this is a temple, your temple. And no one is allowed to enter into this castle, into this temple, hopefully, without oh. your consent, without you saying, this is, brings me joy. And I'm not talking about the joy and a pleasure that is a warped and you're not understanding. So sometimes we have to really journey within and the pains and the sufferings, not only you, may not be you, maybe someone you know that is going through some trauma, not understanding what's going on. Embracing who we are, embracing the gifts of who we are as humans, as girls, realizing that we are so precious as humans and girls and boys, it doesn't matter. But it's amazing that 92% of sexual assault happens from a man to a woman. We all need to be treated and healed. 
We all do. Today's message is to understand, appreciate, and accept who you are. And if we can start teaching and enhancing the minds of our young girls and becoming more aware of what's happening in the household with the people we trust. The day that I told my mom of what had happened to me when I was 10 years old, she was in shock. The first thing she said was, it's impossible. And then, why didn't you tell me then? But when you are vulnerable, when you are afraid, when you are in fear and you have been told, be quiet, they can't know, it affects you and you hold on to it and then you forget about it. But you know what thing that does not forget? Your body. The body does not forget. The body, the muscles have memory. And the muscle has reactions. Because it's not what happens at this very moment. It's what happened then that was not healed, not was not repaired, not what it was not tended to. And that little girl kept quiet and suppressed, suppressed the emotions, suppressed what has happened. I'm not allowed to speak. I'm not allowed to express. I'm not allowed. I can't because you don't want to hurt the person and definitely you don't want to stir up anything to hurt the family, the honor, the respect, and definitely who would believe me, right? Who would believe me? So I better keep quiet. And you know the ramifications of that is that we get to disrespect ourselves, reject ourselves, and think that there is something wrong with ourselves, our body, our emotions, the way we act, the way we speak, the way we are, even, my God, I'm not perfect. I have to be perfect for somebody else to like me. I have to speak this way for somebody else to like me. Or I don't care for anyone to like me. I better isolate myself. I better put walls around me because they can't love me the way unless I do this or I give this or I give in or I am quiet. All these scenarios go through a person that has been traumatized. So wearing a jacket is just a signal, is just an outer thing. It's like you can't be happy because happy from the outside. But to find the joy, to find your own essence of knowing you matter. That you are more than enough. That your word of no learning to know and say no. The word N-O is as good as Y-E-S. Learn how to spell it. Learn to say it. Learn to honor yourself with that word and be okay with it. And if they don't like it, it's okay. At least later you won't go hurting yourself, becoming more self-destructive in one form or another, thinking that I just got used. I got hurt. I got assaulted. Maybe I had something to do with it. Maybe I didn't say it out loud. Maybe I didn't scream, even though it was suppressed and shut. And the hand was on my mouth. And I went limp. No one has the right to enter this temple of yours. Not emotionally, physically, nor bodily. 
I did say today's message is about sensitive. But sensitive, realizing that it's happening everywhere. And the homes that have been protected, loved, cared for, and the ones who have never experienced kudos to you then stand with us stand with us you know I always say you've heard the cliche things do not happen to you they happen for you and you know years later as I started doing this work and when I got certified as a domestic abuse consultant and then I went and got certified as a stress management, anger management. When I was doing the hypnotherapy work of understanding why my body was creating the ovarian cyst just to say no. Because I couldn't say no. My body did it. So tend to yourself. And I mean it. Come to understand, appreciate, when you are doing all these self-help books, going to seminars, understanding the why. Why do you want self-help? It's not only reading it, it's understanding it, peeling it away. And it's not something that some people say, are you going to find the secrets inside that I don't want to say or share? I'm even afraid of what it's going to be revealed. There's nothing to be afraid if you placed it there. You did. You made it quiet. You made it hide. And you forgot. My healing came when I realized perhaps I was so much of a light that they needed to penetrate to receive light for themselves. And that was the beginning. And then I had to, to go deeper and deeper to heal the wounds. It's not something we all talk about or share. But to express Find a therapist, find a coach, find someone that will just listen to you. Or you can also write in the privacy of your own home. Write all the things that you want to express. Or you can come and see me. I am here for you. There is not a thing that we can't talk about. I am here truly to help you show up, stand up and speak up, to express how you feel for you, not for anybody else, so that you can stand up. And when we say stand up, when we say, when I wrote the book, stand up to slim down is for you to stand up for you who you are so you can shed all that emotional garbage all that weight all the emotional physical mental burdens that you held on to standing up for who you are and then so that you can light the road and see the road that you are walking the path in light and show up for yourself so that you can glow with the gift that you are. All because you matter and you are truly here for a reason. We all have a story, right? But what is your story? Isn't it time for you to wear a jacket and stand in solidarity for who you are? 
Thank you for being present. As always, said uh, Adrian, someone who thinks you should be safe like a teacher, but you're not. Yes, teacher, clergy. There are so many. And those we trust. And what I want is to realize that we it's about time we start trusting ourselves and our gut feelings. Right? So start taking care of yourself, your body, your mind, your spirit, your beautiful who you are before the body breaks you down. And until next week, I truly thank you for being here, for being present. And if this message resonates with you, by all means, would you please share? Share with the ones who must hear this. Share the ones that may want to wear their jeans and understand the significance of the jeans we wear, either torn up or tight. It doesn't matter. You're wearing it for you. And share, subscribe, and be part of our 3E community. My name is Lisa, and it's about time we heal within. And until next week, God bless you, and may the universal light surround you. Thank you for being here. If you want to check out some of the testimonials that I've got, click right here. But if you want to go back and watch other videos from a week ago, two weeks ago, even a year ago, 